Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the Dev Influencers Podcast. I'm your host, Charles Max Wood. I've been podcasting for the last 12 years. I've been programming for about 15 years uh, professionally. Um, yeah, those timelines kind of add up. Um, I've produced more than 3,000 episodes across more than 20 podcasts. Um, I currently run a podcast network called devchat.tv, if you're not familiar with that. And uh, I'm going to talk about how to become a dev influencer and how to make a difference in the communities that you serve. So um, over the last few episodes, I've kind of been just telling my story. And there's a lot to the story. And there are a lot of lessons to be pulled out of it. Um, this one, I'm going to talk about how I got my first freelance clients. And I've talked about this on other shows. It's, you know, but it's interesting that, you know, as a freelancer, you can make opportunities come in. I call, you know, I call it uh, opportunities inbound or inbound opportunities, right? And sometimes it's, hey, do you want to take over this thing? Or, hey, do you want to create this thing? Or, hey, do you want to be a part of this thing? Um, but it can also come in the form of business, right? And so um, I got I got laid off in um, September of 2010. Um, I used to call it my Independence Day, but you know, I've, I've picked up a free, a full-time job since then. So I'm looking to have another one of those. Maybe it'll be the same day. That would be fun. Um, but yeah, September 16th, 2010, um, I got laid off from my job. Okay. I showed up to work, walked in, uh, sat down, got to work. Somebody from HR came in and said, Hey Chuck, I got to talk to you. Um, they, they wanted to talk to another guy, Mac at the same time. Um, I still see Mac around. Um, they asked me if I knew where David was, David Brady told them that I didn't. Right. And so, uh, I texted him and I was like, Hey, they're asking where you are at work because he was late. And, uh, then I went in and got laid off and, you know, they gave me a severance and, you know, they, they paid out the bonus that I had earned, um, for doing the extra work over the last few weeks. Incidentally, David and I had been at a conference the weekend before. And so, uh, anyway, it was really interesting just to see how it all kind of shook down. Um, but at the end of the day, I needed to pay bills, right? And so I had this problem. I had about a month, maybe a month, month and a half's worth of money. I had a wife who was freaked out because I'd gotten laid off again, right? I talked about that the first time I got laid off. Um, but I got laid off again. Um, I was tired of working for people at this point because, um, the first job I really loved, they got acquired politics and, you know, I eventually left because I, they were screwing me over, right? They literally had a job wreck up for the same job I was doing to hire a third person for the QA team. And that job wreck was for 30 grand more than I was making that year, which was $40,000, right? So they, they were offering $70,000 for somebody to come in and do the same job I was doing. I was just like, I'm out, right? Uh, they wouldn't match the salary that I got offered from the other company. And so I, I was out of there. Um, but yeah, so things were great until they weren't and they went south and I left. And then the next job, I really loved it. I loved it the whole time I was there. I got laid off the next job. Um, I was there. It was fun for the first couple of months. And then it just kind of sucked worse and worse and worse until I just got tired of it. And I wound up going to this other job, which I loved, 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 loved laid off. And so I was like, okay, well, it seems like um, the the jobs that I want to keep are the ones that are laying me off. And the jobs that I eventually get tired of and want to leave are the ones that will let me stick around forever, right? Even though I'm not happy there, right? And in fact, the, the one job, the one where I complained about my boss, um, the CEO, when I quit, he he called me, well, I had to call him three times to get him to come into the office so I could quit. And the third time I actually told him I was quitting, asked him if I could tell everybody at work because I really love my coworkers. He told me yes. So I went and told everyone I was leaving. And then he chewed me out for two hours for telling everybody I was leaving and for putting him in a weird predicament because I was the team lead on their primary uh, service. And then he threatened to sue me when I wouldn't tell him where I was going to. So go figure, right? I mean, you you can't win, right? is kind of where I was at. I was like, look, I just, you know, I, I'm just not ever going to be in a job that I love. And so, um, so I went to my wife and I said, I want to go freelance. And she freaked out. She freaked. It's funny because if you ask her, like if you ever meet her and you ask her, she'll tell you that she legitimately freaked when I told her I wanted to go freelance. You know, we're going to starve. 
And um, her dad talked to her, and I'm not sure exactly what he said. But between what he told her, because he, he'd been out on his own. He's, he's a general contractor, and he's been, you know, not employed by anybody for a long time. And so he kind of talked her around a bit on that. And then I promised her that if that bonus and severance ran out, that I would take a job somewhere, right? Even if it wasn't ideal. And so I was out simultaneously looking for contracts and jobs, right? Because I had a month, right? And so I wanted to have something where the money runs out and I go, I accept your offer, right? And and I could go to that job. And so uh, I went and got that first um, that first contract. And essentially the way that it went down was that um, I went and did the interview with those guys and I offered, um, I, I think I said this in the last one, I offered $60 an hour and everybody else was off at, you know, doing like 120, 130 bucks an hour at least. And so, you know, they were like, well, you're cheap and we can see that you know what you're doing. Right. And so they hired me to work on this contract and I worked on it for several months. Um, I had to sign an NDA because the client was a high profile person. Um, you know, and it was a brand for, for that person. And I don't know what this details are. I don't even know if the website's still up. So, um, I'm not going to disclose what it was, but, um, it was a spree contract and spree was this e-commerce platform that was out there. So, um, worked on spree for a while. And then I realized after talking to some friends of mine that I should have asked for more money, right? That, that, the the rate that I was working at was ridiculously low. And so I talked to them. I decided the next contract I was going to, you know, ask for 120 bucks an hour. And so um, I start looking. And while I was out looking, a friend of mine introduced me to uh, Brian, who runs, uh, it's Mirror Recruiting and the ROR in Mirrors, Sands Ruby on Rails, right? So he was specialized in Ruby on Rails recruiting and specifically was helping people um, match up between a full-time job and right. He wasn't, he wasn't out there looking to help people line up contracts, but he had this contract show up, you know, they needed a part-time person. And so I picked up that work for um, 120 bucks an hour, 10 hours a week. And you know, all of a sudden my month and a half's worth of money is looking like three months worth of money, right? Or four months worth of money. And, you know, things are looking pretty good. Now, the way that that connection came about was that the person who introduced me to Brian was a fan of the shows. He was actually the person, I think I mentioned this on another show. He actually paid for me for my hotel room when I went down to RubyConf in uh, New Orleans, in like 20, whenever it was. Um, but yeah. Um, so, you know, terrific guy. Um, and he was a fan of mine, right? He was a, <laughs> legitimately, he was a fan of mine. And so he, which is, is weird to say, cause it's weird thinking of people as being fans, right? Cause most of the time I'm sitting in my office by myself. Right. And so, you know, you, you see people go nuts for their fandom and, you know, I, I just, it, it's just strange to me to think that anybody even cares what I think sometimes. But um, <clears throat> anyway, so so I, I went out there and I just kind of put out there that I was looking for contracts. He put me in touch with Brian. Brian hooked me up with this contract. Um, I was working for Gannett Press. I was working on a website called The Bold Italic. It's still out there. It was written in Ruby on Rails. Some consulting firm had built it um, and they just needed maintenance on it, right? So 10 hours a week, good deal, right? So I was now making okay money. I wasn't making great money, but I was making okay money. And um, all of that came about through the screencasts and podcasts, right? I was still doing Teach Me to Code. I was still doing the podcast, uh, Rails Coach, which I had rebranded to Teach Me to Code podcast. And yeah, it was going It was going awesome, right? And just as the contract ran out on the e-commerce stuff, <clears throat> I got a phone call. And I remember vividly, so um, I was over at a friend of mine, uh, Tyler Bird, I was over at his house, and we were doing a Rails Rumble, which was a challenge that they did over over the weekend, right? And um, so we were building this app. I can't even remember what we were building, but there were, there were three or four of us there. We were building it out, and um, 
I walk, I was walking out to my car and my phone rang, right? And so I answer it and it's this guy, Myron, on the other end. And he goes, hey, my name's Myron. I got your phone number off my website. I just put a little banner, real small banner with my phone number on my website that basically said, um, you know, do you need Rails work? Call me, right? And it, it was on the page that had the podcast and everything else. So he called me up. <laughs> he punched in the number off the banner, called me up. And uh, he basically explains that he's got this project that he's been working on, been trying to pull it together. It's based on this print, these principles around getting tasks done. And it's kind of a social network slash task manager slash other stuff, right? And he was wondering if I could work on it because he'd been trying to build it himself. He'd been trying to learn Ruby on Rails. He'd been listening to my podcasts, right? He'd watched some of my videos and some of Eric's videos as well, right? Because some of the popular ones were Eric's before, you know, when he was running it. And uh, so he wanted to know if I would work on it. And so I worked on it for several months, right? And um, anyway, so, so yeah, so I got this contract, right? And again, you know, so then I go, you know, with the other, you know, two thirds of my income, give or take, going from $60 an hour to $125 an hour. And that was directly off the podcast. In fact, it was directly off the Teach Me to Code podcast. It wasn't off the videos so much. It was off the podcast. And it was him trying to do it himself, realizing that he couldn't, knowing that, hey, this expert guy has his phone number right there where I can go and, and click on it. And I can I can give him a call. And so he did. And that worked out, right? And so he paid for it until he ran out of money. Um, you know, tried to make a, a go of it. At that point, he had an MVP. So then he was trying to take it to get investors so that he could, you know, continue to pay me. And I don't think that ever really materialized for him. But that, that was kind of the plan, okay? So everything went to plan as far as that went. He just didn't get investors and never came back. So, but but that worked out for a while. And, you know, right around when some of that contract work was drying up, I had somebody else come to me. And in this case, they were actually looking to build essentially what amounted to a Twitter clone. And the difference was, is that um, <clears throat> the the guy who was bankrolling it and building it was a triathlete, right? He, he loved Ironmans and, and marathons and all this stuff. And so what he wanted is he wanted a website where other people who were enthusiastic about those kinds of events and workouts would get on and they would post their workout every day. And so it was a tweet with icons, right? And the icons were, you know, biking, you know, uh, stationary bike, um, running, treadmill, you know, weights, you know, whatever. And so you could post your workout, right? And so I did this for 10 minutes. I did this for 20 minutes. I did this for an hour and blah, 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 right? And uh, he found me through the videos that Eric had made on how to build a Twitter clone in Rails, right? And the, the Twitter clone was like in Rails 1.1 1 .1 or 1.2 or something. Um, you know, I think I wound up building it in Rails 3, I think. Uh, Rails 2 or Rails 3. But yeah, he found that video. And then he found that banner, right? And then called the phone number. And it turns out that he had family here. He had a daughter here. He had a son that was looking to go to school out here. And so he came out, hung out with his daughter. I think uh, every time he came out after that, we'd just go get lunch, right? But he had a brother-in-law who was co-founder of Dentrix, who was kind of his technical person, who had told him to look up Ruby on Rails as, as the technology to build it in, right? And so I wound up building this website that did all this extra stuff, right? And then gave people a way to put their equipment in, right? Because, you know, runners are like programmers. It's like, you know, what gear are you using? You know, what's your stack, basically? And so anyway, it was it was really fascinating, you know? And I worked on that one for quite a long time. You know, I actually hired a subcontractor to work on it with me for a while. And all of these just came out of putting that that content out there and being an influencer. Now, you know, I could I could go on and on and on and on. And the podcast did continue to send me leads in different ways. But at the end of the day, my point is, is that by having a following and being able to talk about this stuff, the the result was, was that, hey, here come freelance clients. And boy, did, did they show up, right? And so I was freelance for three or four years 
before I made a transition to go full-time podcasting. So I'll probably talk a little bit more about uh, the podcasts in particular, you know, how I started Ruby Rogues and stuff, because that's kind of the next phase. Um, you know, how I started it with James and, you know, the other folks that were there. And then and then we'll probably get into the transition from uh, freelancing to full-time podcasting. But um, yeah, you know, I mean, it's 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 amazing to me just, you know, how putting the content out there, demonstrating that you're capable was enough to keep me busy and fed and happy for like four or five years before I made that transition. So anyway, um, that's pretty much all I've got. But yeah, you know, if you're out there and you're thinking about going freelance or you are freelance, having a channel where your target market can come and find you and learn about your expertise is a really solid way to go to find clients. Um, it's a marketing, uh, structure that I also recommend to product companies, but at the end of the day, yeah, if you're looking for freelance clients, then becoming an influencer is a great way to do it. And, uh, if you want to know more about how to do it, then go to devinfluencers.com slash apply, uh, put in your name and email address. It'll take you to the application, fill it in. Let me know in the application that that's what you're after, right? We'll get on a strategic call and we will figure some stuff out for you. All right. And then we'll talk and we'll figure out if the accelerator is the right way to go for you. So again, that's devinfluencers.com slash apply. And yeah, let me use some of this 12 years of podcasting experience, 15 years of programming experience, four years of freelance experience, you know, to, to help you figure out how to make this work and make you successful. And in the meantime, max out.